we'll see about that. Okay, I think now it should work. Sorry about that. Let me take a second. My mic's all beat up. Good, good, good. There we go. Let me shut myself. So I guess it's going to be fun. Uh, I want to do a tier list. And if you've been watching these videos, you may know um, that sometimes people do these kinds of things where you rank stuff. Usually it's done with pop cult stuff like TV shows and things like that. But today we're going to rank my own paintings. So let me show you. This is what we're going to do. And as people start dropping in, you'll see it's really going to be fun. Uh, hey, Pierre, how are you doing? Uh, did you see my cat painting with the three front legs? Nobody seemed to notice. It was a disaster. I pulled back from disaster by lifting out. Great lesson to learn. Actually, I don't remember if I saw it, but I'll go back later and check because it sounds super funny. Uh, it sounds like a fun little trolling move to do that and have, you know, see if people notice. That's actually a funny idea. Um, I may consider doing something like that myself. Not a three-legged, three-front-legged cat, but maybe something else. Uh, that will be my own. Uh, so, yeah, so basically I have an assortment of paintings here. Uh, and I've created a tier from top to bottom. So S tier is going to be I outdid myself. Amazing result. And by the way, let me know uh, that you can hear me well. Let me know how you're doing. Hey, 22. Hey, Dwayne. Hope everything's going super well. And if you have any questions for me, you know, generally speaking, like any other stream, feel free to. So S tier means I outdid myself. A is excellent. B is good. C is bad. And D is trash. And I don't know. I wonder if we'll have anything going on that tier. Um, I don't know if it randomized the paintings. I feel like it kind of did, but I don't know. I'm going to randomize them for a few seconds here. Uh, a few more times. I feel like some of them are just by name, and then I chose a generic name, and so they follow. And by the way, there's a, the new painting here that I uh, just finished. Uh, you can see it here, of the two people. And I shared that uh, over on Instagram. So Check that out too if you're interested. Um, now let me make sure. Let me do this. Let's try zooming in just a bit more. Uh, there we go. Uh, it's gonna be fun. So here, here I see now all your messages. Thank you so much. Hey John. Oops, 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 oops. That was weird. Okay. Um, why can't I? There we go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, John. Hope you're doing super well yourself. Hey Monica, how are you doing? Uh, Dwayne sends greetings from Jamaica. Thank you so much for letting me know. Hey Laura, how are you doing? Hey White Reza. Thank you so much, Robert. Uh, I'm using my mic, so yeah, it should be a little better than when I paint. Uh, thank you, Dwayne. Hey Jess, how are you doing? Is it Jess or Jesse? Jesse, I guess. Uh, Laura, can't stay, but I wanted to say hi. Yeah, thank you so much for dropping by. I'll, I'll probably post like a short, either a YouTube short version of a, or an, an Instagram reel of that. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. Uh, uh, Red Hamohan uh, says, hi, Rod. Hey, how are you doing? And uh, everyone, let me know if you want to say where you're from. Hey, Ray from Scotland. Hey, Lollipop, how are you doing? Hey, Jan. Uh, hello, Liron, everyone. Rain in Bergen, Norway today. Awesome. Awesome. Here it's super hot. <laughs> hey, JK, how are you doing? From Denmark. Hey, Marina, how are you doing? I hope everything is going super duper well. Um, so I think we'll get started. Let's reward the people who are here on time and not waste too much time. So just to repeat, because a lot of people joined, basically I have a, a random assortment of paintings anywhere from 2016 um all the way to uh now basically uh uh hey Pharrell hey hey Karin how are you doing hey Maggie uh hey Ladybug how are you doing hey Bethany good morning Minnesota awesome um from Finland that's cool uh so we'll rank my paintings from the S tier that is the best all the way down to the trash tier. Now, here's I'll, I'm going to give you a quick disclaimer for this entirety of the live stream, of course. I don't really think any of my paintings are trash, so to speak, or a waste of watercolor paper or a waste of space or something terrible that should have never been created. But and of course I'm kind of kidding and joking here. Uh, don't don't like don't take this too seriously. This is kind of a joke thing, and um, it will be fun to see how I rank them. Um, 
not to be taken too seriously and definitely don't try and compare to other people to yourself. There's no no reason to. Uh, Jan says there should be a grade between good and bad, I think. Um, no, actually, uh, so here's this. This shows my perception. Good to me is not good enough. I strive for the A, sometimes for the S, and B is middle. B could be changed to just middle, actually. Um, we could do that. Or you could imagine it just says, okay. But then this should A should be good. So that's a problem. So I hope it makes some kind of sense. Uh, let's get started with the first one and see how it goes. Okay. So I'm going to choose the flutist, which I really, really like. There we go. Uh, I, I'm sure many of you know this one. By the way, remember this one. This is an old one. I have some old paintings here. Uh, so it should be fun to see how they uh, stack up. And the cool thing about this is you can change. Uh, a lot of the grading, so I can put it here and then regret it and bring it over here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, flutist. One thing I will say is, at the time, I definitely outdid myself. Um, so, if you would ask me back then, I'd probably go ahead and put this in S tier. But when I look at it today in retrospective, um, I don't feel like that's the relevant kind of tagline for this one i'll probably put it in a excellent one of the things i like about this one is that i managed to get such a good flow i don't know it was half lucky half technique the warm and cool and everything works i think really well together um it was a good video that got a lot of views and people enjoyed it um and yeah, exactly. Same. Pierre, no such thing as good or bad necessarily. Just change and progress. Definitely, John, same thing. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how. And of course, I'll try and give my explanation uh, to why why I do the. I give it a grade. I give it. Okay. So don't worry. I, again, don't be hurt by the labels. Don't don't treat trash. It's just oh, I can actually edit it now. Good. So let's edit it. So let's do this. I did excellent. Um, let's do this. Great. Okay. Iffy and bad. Okay, let's do this. And this is again subjective. This is my painting, so I can judge them as harshly as I want. Uh, but yeah, that's that. Uh, so let's do another one. Let's do a bit of an older one here. So you know this this one right here. I don't even think I ever shared it. This was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> this painting was a disaster area. Um, I may give it like a higher grade for effort because I do remember working on this one and actually putting some effort in it. But one thing I will say, <laughs> what the hell were you thinking? Yeah, exactly, Robert. Um, but one thing I will say about this one is the composition is just a no-no to me because there are two trees kind of to the sides. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't tell the story. I would actually want to see more of the building. I don't know what I'm doing with this. It was a nice study, I guess, in, I guess, light and shadow and the way some of the windows are dented inwards. Yeah, I can re rename Iffy to Meh. That was what my original thought, by the way. It was Meh. Just one meh. I'm not going to do multiples. Um, but in any case, yeah. So I would say... Hmm. I kind of want to put it in meh. But I may remove it later on and put it in bad. So just prepare yourself emotionally. <laughs> okay. Let's choose something interesting. So this one, I actually have a video showing this process. This is some kind of a... I, I was in a streak of painting views from... Uh, rural Germany. So that was fun. Uh, John says, man, is exactly what I say in my head about most of my paintings. It's interesting because I bet you, you know, if you send me a few more examples, I'll be like, no, it's not me. So sometimes we're very harsh judges, of, again, of our own art. So just something to have in mind. I, am, I may end up not putting anything in bed, by the way. Um, you know what? I actually may put something in bed. I'll, I have an idea. But in any case, let's go back to it. We're talking about this one, Germany. Um, it's kind of a village thing, and I loved these kinds of scenes. Uh, so this is a painting I enjoy doing. Sorry for disorienting you all the time. This is a painting I did enjoy painting. Um, I think there's just a bit of emptiness in the middle. I don't think the message is clear enough. 
Um, I don't think it's meh because I did do a good job. If you actually zoom in on the details, and it's too bad I can't make these larger, like just by clicking them. But if you do look at the details, the windows actually got pretty nicely there. So what I would say is I'll put it in OK for now. I'll put it in OK, and we'll we'll think about it. Okie doke. And now let's look at an interesting one. So let's look at this portrait. Now, if you've gone through my uh, portraits uh, course on Udemy, that's the, the painting I did. That's the photo. That's when I started to really enjoy colors. Um, so I have a special place in my heart for this painting, for sure. Uh, I think the technique is pretty good. It could be better. I think the flow could definitely be better. Um, but... I think the overall message works really well, and I love the way I arrange the colors. So I'm actually going to put it in great for now. Okay, things may change. That's the beauty of it. You, I can bring something else and put it before these. Now I don't rank them here. I kind of just leave it be. But maybe later we can rearrange some stuff there in that regard. Um, thank you so much, Monica, and thank you, Dwayne, for encouraging people. Uh, to like this video, I really appreciate it. Just thought it would be a fun topic, our live stream, very different, you know. Uh, Pierre says, I had one of my efforts you liked framed, picked it up today, and receipt said, kids watercolor. Awesome, awesome. Um, let me think if I remember which one it was. I'm not sure off the top of my head. I look at a lot of art, so yeah. Um, Marjorie, I'm surprised to be here today. Long story, it's nice that you are showing your work at one time so we can see how your self-critique and problem-solving skills are massively improved. You're right. Yeah, and I've been I've been asking about this, and it's been a while since I've shown um, you know, what I consider to be bad paintings or old paintings when I had a lot less experience. So I think this is a good opportunity, actually. Um White Press, I think you shouldn't judge only by considering the flaws, but consider all things like composition, realism, luminosity, spontaneity, color harmony. Yeah, definitely. But when I say flaws, I look at all of these things, I guess. So yeah. But uh, yeah, I'll try I'll try and be a fair a fair judge. I'll try and looking at all the different uh, all the different kind of variables at play. Tom says, I can't see the options too well, but you got to include some of the 100 cards challenge highlights. Yeah, I actually don't have them, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, let's go with the geese, geese painting. Uh, so this one I painted, filmed the whole process. It got really, really good feedback. A lot of people enjoyed this one. The video and the painting itself, um, I really like it. I think there are a lot of good stuff going on in this one. Um, a lot of the warm, cool play, a lot of different things. The one thing I'm actually not as happy about is the water and how the, the flow works there. Um, but I do kind of feel like putting it in the outdid myself tier because I feel like even for now, something about it is special. It has some kind of a, like an X factor. I don't know what it is to this day. I don't know what it is, and I really love it. And if you want to see it, it's in the gallery. You can see a high-quality uh, picture of it in the gallery under Seascapes, I guess. So I'm going to put it in Outdid myself, because why not? <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Let's see what next. Uh, do you do you have any subjects you want me to go over? Maybe let, let me know. Portrait, Cityscape, whatever it is. If you have one, uh, let me know. Thank you so much, Dwayne. Uh, White Reza, I like the building. Yeah, it's kind of flat. The composition is bad, but it's pretty realistic in my opinion. Light isn't bad. Yeah, because light has been such a guide for me for a few years now. So the one thing I usually don't mess up is the values. Uh, but I do sometimes mess them up, of course. And hey, Laura, thank you for being here. Mark, I try not to self-critique too much. My philosophy is paint and move on. The rest will take care of itself. Yeah, if I wouldn't have created content, I probably wouldn't do this too. Uh, it's just for the fun of, you know, sharing this. Um, so, yep, we'll go without did for the geese. Um, so next up, let's do this one, which I, I have to admit I hate. So a couple of things. If we talk about composition, I think it's actually decent. There is this wave, and I'm talking about, of course, this one with the boat. There is something to, and you're not missing too many details. It's just that there's not a lot there. And this was the time where I was just kind of winging it uh, and trying to, you know, paint things and hope for the best. Uh, this is also a time where I followed a lot of Stephen Cronin 
tutorials on YouTube. He's really interesting painter. And um, it's not this one. This one is not. This one is from kind of half imagination, half I don't know what. Um, but yeah, so a couple of things. The technique's a little off. I think the water, it's just, usually the water won't be as, as light as the sky. It's going to be a little darker and really make it make kind of a distinction between the two. So that's something I don't like as much. Uh, I do like the movement. So there is this zigzag pattern. The, that part of the composition is really good, I think. A part of the composition that is kind of terrible is that tree on the right. <laughs> Forgive me for saying, but that's like... Uh, that's a problem to me because really aligning elements with the edge of the frame usually is not such a good idea. I'd much rather have it here where my arrow is. Uh, it would have been a much better placement and probably move the boat a bit off center, even though there's something cool about the boat being in the dead center and kind of doing a cross with the horizon. So that's something nice. Now, the paper I was using is pretty cheap, so the quality is so-so. So let me think about it. Um, it's not a meh, you know, I don't feel like it's a meh. I feel like it's a bad. I have to, you'll have to forgive me. I feel like this goes in the bad category. It's not a meh. I just, and you know what's funny? It's not even bad due to my fault. Like I remember putting a decent amount of effort into it, you know, as much as you can, there isn't much there, but I put an okay amount of effort into it. Just the end result, it's just the end result itself. And usually I am proud of how how much effort I am putting into the processes. So none of this is really too harsh of a judgment on myself. It's more like, well, well that's the result, in my opinion. Uh, let's do another one, a little newer. We have this scene from Georgia. Uh, this is actually the building we stayed at, at a, an Airbnb. And this was the view from outside. This is actually really interesting because you've probably gone through this experience where you're like, okay, I have such a good idea. I have such a cool composition, a subject that I enjoy, a subject that I like, and then you paint it and it's crap. And it's just, you know, something didn't work there. The plan, even though it seemed solid, even though the subject seemed interesting, it just doesn't work. And that was one of those works. It's just not like the message I was trying to achieve with it. Just it wasn't a good idea to begin with, I think. This whole bottom of the painting being super dark, that's just not um the thing i would go for had i known this would turn out this way i would do something completely different so i'm gonna put this i'll put it even under the meh i'm gonna put it in bed which is funny so the meh this one is from like this one i didn't mention this one i think is from 2016 so that's a long time ago that's six years ago and this one is from 2021 2021. So you, you see, it's not even necessarily, it won't move with time. This one's from 2017 or something like that too. So it really moves it in an axis of its own, so to speak, you know. Uh, let's see what you're saying in the chat. Mark, hey, I have an interesting painting topic for those who like the Rolling Stones. I saw them in Madrid last night. And I thought how nice it would be to paint something that's all reserved six years. Oh yeah, that's a cool idea. Especially if someone's like a big fan they can probably get it to them as a gift. That will be fun. Uh, Patricia says, good morning, everyone. I love your rating system. And about that boat in the middle of the painting, sometimes it's fun to break the rules. I like it here. Yeah, I love that cross. You know, I'm surprised by it. Maybe I should have another go at a similar scene and actually go with that cross. Um, I hate that your bed is still so much better than my good, uh, Robert. Yeah, you know what's funny? It's just something that's always changing. And, I, and again, I say don't compare because... <sighs> I feel like as I improve, my standards improve too. And things that that today I think are good, I'm not going to think are good tomorrow. That's just how it works. It's not just the skill, but it's also kind of the taste. And, and even not just standard, I would say taste. Some things I liked to do in the past, I just don't like as much today. Um, so it's interesting, you know. White Res, I 100% agree with your ranking. Also, happy to hear. Uh, hey, Gujala. Hi from India. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm going to try and stick to um, the bottom of the chat as much as I can, you know. Uh, how do you get this pastel look? Not enough water? Yeah. Yeah, that's usually it. Um, not enough Not enough paint, actually. And also, sometimes not enough water, too. Um, uh, Olivia, hi, everyone. Hi, all. Uh, you've got enough good and excellent works, but you decide to show not, uh, not bad, just miss one. You're 
Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So because, you know, it's like if I show you just a bunch of stuff I'm happy with and we end up with a skewed scale, I don't like that idea, you know. And it's funny. Sometimes the ranking will go based on my idea and was I able to execute it? Not even just the end result, I think. If I wasn't able to execute on it, then I may be disappointed by it. Uh, let's grab... So we have a bunch of topics here. Let's take something a little different, like this castle. And luckily for us, because I actually like to write dates on paintings, and I can show it to you. I think it's here. I think this painting should be here at an arm's reach. Let me see if I can find it for you. I'll show it to you up close. It would be fun. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's here. Maybe it's in my scanner. Oh. No, that's a different one. I'm pretty sure I had it here. But give me a second. And this just really goes to show how you should probably write dates on paintings. There we go. Let me actually switch to solo view for a second. Uh, where am, where's the mouse? Here's the mouse. Okay, there we go. See? And again, luckily for us, I do write the dates. So 1st of July 2016, which is crazy. Honestly, I don't even remember my reference. I don't know what I painted this based on. I have no recollection of it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I hope it's inter entertaining to see it. It was here, so I thought I'd show it. Um, but yeah, so first off, I even now I like it. I like it a lot. The colors are vibrant. It looks interesting. The composition is terrible. Like, why is the top here? Why is it sticking out? I don't know. No reason to do that. Uh, didn't plan my space correctly, right? That's something that, that happens a lot. As a beginner, that happened to me a lot. Um, but I do like it. Now, you see, now that's a problem because there's great. I don't feel it's great. I feel it's okay. I have to change the okay to decent. It's just, I have to, I'm sorry. Because it's not okay. It should be great, decent, meh, bad. So I feel like this is decent. And for a 2016 painting of mine to be in the dead center of the scale, that's actually not that bad. Um, this one, I believe, is 2017, the portrait. Um, so that's the highest ranking oldest one for now. We'll see if something will take the cake. And this one from Georgia is the newest worst. <laughs> so we'll see about that. Okay, I have a good one for you. Are you ready? Or should I go over a few comments first? I think I should go over the a few comments first because I have a really good one for you. Yeah, white dress, okay, plus. Uh, and thank you so much, Dwayne. And thank you for the likes. Really, really appreciate it. Let me refresh and see how many likes you put here. Oh, thank you. That's awesome. So I see 61 people and 41 likes. I think maybe we have a bit more work to do. Um, also, what subjects do you avoid and why? Um, I don't avoid too many subjects. I think I don't do a lot of animals because they don't interest me as much. I don't do figurative because I don't feel like doing too many nudes. Um, not for myself. I don't care because I do anatomy, but like just to post. I don't know why I feel less comfortable with that. I have no problem seeing them, but I don't like... And painting becomes more realistic. So to me, I just don't like posting it myself. I don't care seeing it. Um, so that's that's a subject I avoid. Figurative, that's really, you know, more realistic. My, my anatomy sketches, it's a little different. It's simplified, so I don't mind. Uh, but it's an interesting question, actually. Um, Aidsra, are all these artworks available on your uh, social media? Actually, some of them aren't, but most of them are. You should be able to find them. And I'll, I'm trying to zoom in as much as I can, but that's the one fault of this tier sister. You can't zoom in properly. Uh, but yeah, Robert says you nailed the architecture aspect of that castle, which alone bumps into good. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Uh, the ranking words are solely right. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's I can't go too outrageous. Um, I don't know. So next is going to be a really good one. This one. And by the way, if there is a painting you really want to see, just hit me up and I'll send you a picture, even after the live stream. This painting right here, I know it's hard to see, 
In fact, maybe I'll share it with you. I feel like sharing it with you. Let's see. Because because I'll, I'll to show you a bit of a... You know what? I can just... Hmm. Can I just open the image in a new tab? Or maybe... You know, well, let's see. Let's see. I can try and open it up for you and see what happens if you... If you want to see more of it, where's my desktop? Why did my desktop disappear? Um, okay, there we go. So let me try. I can find, I can show it to you properly. Um, so I'm going to do, you because that's a special one for me. And you'll see in just one second. And maybe you know, most, most chances are you don't know because it's a very niche story, let's say. I never really told it per se. Um, so let me find it for a second. There we go. Open with, so I'm going to open it up with uh, Chrome. And then I can probably just share the tab where I show it. Sorry for the, you know, for the bit of a delay. Um, share screen Chrome tab. There we go. Okay, so we should see it now a, a bigger version. This painting, I painted plein air. I actually painted this plein air and I challenge you to squint your eyes, take a few steps back or look at the smaller version where we'll, we'll see in just one second. And it's almost, almost photorealistic if you try really hard. And that was a huge, achievement for me because it was plein air to remind you. I did this one outside in front of it. This was the first plein air. I felt like I'm able to detach from what I think is there, like like we like to say, uh, to, to painting it actually the way I see it. And that was huge for me. Let me, can I zoom in a bit? There we go. That was huge for me, just detaching from the, I think it looks like this, and actually painting it the way I see it was huge. And that's something a lot of people complain they have trouble with, to actually see the shapes and see the, and there's a lot of faults with this one. If you look at the composition, look at this tree here, and another tree here, and another tree here. All of these trees are even distances. It's so uninteresting. This should probably move a little closer to the right. There's so much about this that could be improved, but, um, okay, I'm, now I'm, I'm getting confused with the, okay, good, with the interface of StreamYard. Uh, but in case, yeah, I, uh, there's, there's so much that could be improved in terms of composition, in terms of everything, but still, to this day, this one holds up as, I think, one of my best plan errors in a sense, you know, in a sense, I have to say. Um, so I think that means that this one has earned a outdid myself. <laughs> I hope I'm not handing it out too easily, but that's just, you know, it's just that. Um, exactly. That's the thing. The white car, white reserve, you're right. The white car is so bright, the background doesn't matter, I believe. It's just the background becomes believable by doing that. The car behind it is white too, but it's in the shadow. So I don't know. It's just really interesting. Uh, Mark, that's really interesting. You said that paint what you see rather than what you know. Uh, yeah, what you see rather than what you know. So instead of painting your preconceived notions, like a kid would uh, draw a hand like a symbol of sausage fingers, when you're able to go beyond it and actually see the thing clearly, Instead of how you think it is, you paint it just like it looks and you're not thrown off by the values and the light and reflected light and all sorts of things that happen. That's when I find that I get the results, not only the best, I think, but also the ones I'm happiest with. Um, so, yeah. So that's my thoughts on this one and happy you like it. Uh, the car uh, reminds me of stuff of a book i bought of yours recently oh awesome yeah it's the so i even know what it is i even know what illustration it is in the book uh thank you so much for getting it so let's do another one and let's go with i'm just trying to vary it up a bit let's go with this portrait here so this is actually someone uh i know in real life and i kind of just uh, ask them if I can paint them for a picture because it was really good light and shadow and lots of reflected light. I would say this is my first success with reflected light and you can kind of see it around here. Um, 
the the cheek you can tell there's a bit of a you know light that, that shines on it even though it's in the shadow so it's a bit of a complex one uh, there are a lot of mistakes with the values and it's definitely the background's not perfect uh, but I do think I did a good job there. Um, so this one's going to get probably a decent, I think. Again, the flow could be much improved. But like that's the thing I tell you. Even if you don't have the proper technique and flow, just get the right value in the right place and you will be okay. It's not going to be like terrible. Okay. Um, so I would put this... Let's put it in the decent. I may We may change things around again later. We'll see. So let's do another one. Let's do this one. And this is kind of a traditional rooftop view here uh, in Tel Aviv. My personal bias is I don't like this painting, but let's judge it based on its merits. So let's start with my favorite values. The values are really off here. Every wall that's to the left, when I looked at this, I saw the walls they weren't as dark they were lighter and I went much too dark and it was a big mistake and I didn't even realize it after like a few months after I looked back at it even when the painting was done I couldn't really tell that something was so off about it um no it doesn't mean it's ugly or anything but the values are off the colors I like I think it has a very mysterious atmosphere that is created by the colors. Um, <clears throat> by the way, we have so many paintings to go over, so maybe I'll speed it up. Maybe we'll do a speed round where I'm just going to put stuff in different grades and not not give you too big of a reason why. Um, but yeah, so it's an interesting kind of atmosphere. I really dislike the details here on the wall in the foreground. That's just it doesn't work for me. I'm going to probably put it in the meh. It's not bad. I don't think it's decent too. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's do a couple of quick ones. So uh, this one here. Let's do not the gas cans. Let's do this one. So this, <laughs> this I actually have a video of this process, I think. And this was from a time where I really painted separate areas. So this separate area and that separate area. Thank you so much, Richard. Uh, and thank your son for saying that. I really, really appreciate it. Um, that's what he said. Amazeballs. Okay, good. I'm happy. Um, so I painted a lot of things separate. Now, by the way, here's something I talk about when I say um, not a pleasing color harmony. The gray here has nothing to do with the rest of the colors. And I don't know if you can tell, but like the building itself looks nice it's kind of okay but the gray on the ground and all of that is i don't like the way it looks i don't think it really has enough connection to the rest of the scene and that's what i say when i talk about bad color harmony um composition could be better like look at this the, the this left edge right here did i have to give the that kiss between the the you know the edge of the curb and the edge of the paper that's just not that good but and the people are a little too off to the side, I would say. Too many darks. The values are all over the place. Not enough large, clear shapes, you know? Just not enough of them. There's one that's the yellow, maybe a bit of red. Um, the shadows aren't... The shadows are tonal. And, and here's something interesting. The shadows are just darker versions of the same color. The shadow on the gray is a darker gray. The shadow on the red is a darker red. The shadow on the yellow is a darker yellow. That tends to lead to, to me at least, unsatisfying color harmonies and, I don't know, combinations I don't really like as much. So am I going to put it in the... I'm not going to put it in bad. I don't think it's bad, but it's probably meh. You know what? Maybe it is bad. I'm, I'm going to put it in meh for now. I have an interesting bell curve so far. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Let's do... This one that I did plein air. There we go. This painting right here. I actually painted it on the spot. I, I have big love to paintings I painted plein air. Um, I don't know why. It's just it brings something out of me that I think is more fun. However, I don't think this one goes above the middle of the scale. It's kind of decent because 
I went way too dark with the building in the background, way too light with the roof. So for example, this roof would benefit greatly from orange, like a stronger orange to actually show, to differentiate the value from the sky. Here's something people all the time, they ask about values, right? Look at this roof and the sky, same value. The sky is kind of uh, blue, the roof is orange, same value though. So there's no separation between the two. I want you to show that separation. Had I painted it today, I'd probably go with a stronger orange that leads immediately wet next to wet to a strong kind of gray blue that is not as dark, okay? The contrast here basically is too strong. The lights are too light, the darks are too dark. That's something that would happen a lot to me in the past. So it's not a meh because it's a planner. It has some magic to it. I'm going to probably put it in decent, maybe surprising, but I'm going to put it in decent because um, I feel like I did like this little chimney here, details that I did give some attention to. And, and of course, I'm biased because I have my own taste. So I think that's where I'm going to place this one. I don't know if it makes sense or not, but uh, yeah. Hopefully it does. Uh, which rest of portraits are so unforgivable. <laughs> Definitely. Either they work and they're great or they're flaws and they're terrible. Actually, we'll do another portrait now then. Uh, even small flaws appear uh, obvious and destroy the illusion. Yep, yep, it's true. Uh, Mark, thanks for... Okay, yeah, this conversation. We'll skip that. My new motto is paint what you know, paint what you love. It works. That's awesome. Uh, hey, Daiji, how are you doing? Just got on. Hello. What platform are you viewing the gallery from? Uh, this is actually called uh, Tier Maker. It's a website. If you just search Google for tier list or make a tier list, there's this website and they just allow you to do that. It's really fun because I can, you know, I could do this in Photoshop in theory, but this lets you really easily reorganize, move stuff around. Everything moves together with you. I can bring this one back here. I can leave it there. So it's a, it's a really comfortable platform to do that. Just tier maker. That's what it's called. T-I-E-R, not tier crying, uh, which I may cry if I have too many bad paintings. But yeah. Um, oh, let's see here. Did he like the result? I asked him if he wants it. And he was like, oh, yeah, it was re it's really cool. And then he didn't want it. So I guess he didn't like the result as much. Um, Patricia, today I'm bringing some of my paintings to show the owner of a large historic inn who is offering solo exhibits for local artists. Oh, that's awesome. Good luck. Good luck. I think you can do this for sure. Um, so, yeah, let's continue with a portrait. I promise there's going to be a portrait. So let's look at this one, <laughs> which I did. I think I also have it here next to me. I have no idea what I was thinking to myself. This is from the uh, 11th of july again what is it like a day gap from the previous one i have to i have to check now 11th of july what is this one that's like the i don't know 7th of july so these aren't in the same range same month probably um because they were in the same pile and i thought there are two good kind of different examples so yeah what shall i say one thing i like about this is that there are some clear shapes the shadow is very much in the shadow. It's very clear. The colors aren't terrible. They're not too good. Again, with this tonal shading, you see the purple is just a darker version of the purple. The skin tone is a darker version of the skin tone. The skin is actually quite orange, not pink enough, in my feeling at least. The hair, I was actually trying to go for a different temperature. You see the blonde here? It goes from blonde to kind of blue, warm and cool. So that's something neat that I tried. Uh, at least I went for it, you know, tried getting the texture here. This was a not too good paper. And what really irks me is why didn't I just continue the background all the way to the edge of paper? I don't know why. I used to do a lot of this kind of a thing here. And, you know, it's so funny that these two paintings, this one and this one and this one, were painted by the same person. I don't know if you can... You know what? That's interesting. Find another artist... And I'm sure there are. I'm just not familiar with them, really. I don't see too many artists that post this kind of work and this kind of work. I can't think of any artist that paints this level and above, of course, because I'm not the best in the world. But that was that's one of my best works for sure. Someone who shared both this and this level of work, I don't think I've ever seen one. And if you know one, because there probably are, let me know. 
but I don't I don't think I've ever seen such a wild gap. Now it's an interesting point. So where do I place this awkward portrait? I did not outdo myself, and it's not a great piece of work. I don't think it's decent. I think it's meh. The meh here is really building up, really building up. So let's do the other one that was next to it. This one I painted plein air, believe it or not. Now, just like you said earlier about the portraits, White Reza, I find that plein air is the same way. It, it either clicks or it's, it doesn't. And to me, this one was a disaster. And I, I, this is a park close to where we live. Um, there's a building, a gas station down under it. There's a bit of a hill with some trees. I don't know how I, I remember I had such a clean plan, clear plan of what I wanted to achieve and it just all went to crap. Um, so this is probably going to go into bed. Um, the colors are kind of, so here's something interesting. The colors here are harmonious to an extent because I did use like three colors only, probably maybe a green, a blue, and a yellow, something like that. Maybe a sap green, uh, uh, new gamboge, and thalo blue. That's, I believe that's the, those are the colors. So the colors aren't terrible in the way they appear together, but like the, the details are a mess. The values, the contrast, again, this thing with the lights being too light and the darks being too dark. The only good execution here is the sky against the white building. That's pretty much it. So this one's going straight to the bed. Um, you may think it's meh. And from afar, like, I don't know, maybe you can read what's going on there. But to me, it's bad. It was bad execution. It wasn't like the thing, you know. It just wasn't it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, thank you, Dwayne. Uh, so, yeah. Let's move on to another one. A bit of a unique one. Let me know if you get bored and then I'll just do a bunch of them together fast. This one is very interesting. This one. So I don't know how many people have visited. Let me check because I want to make sure I remember the, the name of this structure, right? Um, yeah, OK, it is Palafito. Palafito Houses. Now, I don't even remember where I saw these. Um, I think it was in Chile. I think it was in Chile. Um, but I'm not sure because there I know there are present in other places too. But this is this is interesting. And I actually have this one physically too. If you want to see it, I have it here. Turn off the air condition for a few moments. It's way too cold now. Let's see. Sorry for all the rustling. There we go. So this is from the 25th of June, 2016. Let me go solo here. So this is interesting. These are, you know, uh, Palafito buildings. They're called, uh, they're built on top of a kind of a dry lake thing. And they're just built on these, you know, wooden planks. And I really love these structures and they really inspired me. So I took a few pictures on my South America vacation and then came back home and painted these. You know, this was like a couple of years after this because I was there in 2013, 14. Um, but this is really, really interesting um, structure, I think. So I really like the way it turned out. Um, of course, if I talk about skill, just skill. Yeah, I, I'm much more skilled today, but I actually really like this. So let me figure out where I want to put this. The execution was good. Like the plan I had, I was able to follow it. So you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna surprise I'm gonna surprise myself. I'm gonna put it in the great category. I don't know why. It's just I painted it exactly like I wanted. You can even see a bit of that kind of um bit of a do you see around the sky here at the back? It's very gimmicky, but all this purple and yellow. Now, I actually planned this out. This is how I wanted to paint this. Funny enough, you know? Yeah, Chiloe. Exactly. It was in Chiloe. Yep, yep. Um, I love this place. Wow, I, I enjoyed Chiloe so much because I was traveling solo uh, at the time and for about a month. It was so good. At this restaurant, I would go to... Uh, the same place like a few days in a row and they would uh 
make something special for me that wasn't on the menu, like a bowl, a bunch of stuff. So, you know, so yeah, I like it a lot. It's so funny to think that it's, it's so funny in a way to think that I put this as a great work and like the portrait or this is decent, but I don't know something about the execution. Funny enough, I like it better. So yeah. Um, thank you so much, Mark. I think if you refresh it, there are more likes, but yeah. You know, people are enjoying listening and they forget to drop a like. Oh, here, now I see it. That's awesome. 70 likes. That's that's more like it. Okay. But I know you're enjoying it. I know everyone's enjoying. So you don't have to do a like to let me know. But thank you so much still for doing it. Um, John says, I think it's great that you've consistently been posting your, that you've been consistently posting your progress and journey. It's very motivating to keep practicing. Yeah. And it's even selfish for me. It's motivating myself. You know, when I look at some of these old paintings, they're, they're just really inspiring me to, to you know, I, I was able to move forward and, and not that long of a time frame. When you think about it, I started watercolor at around 2015, 16. I drew a lot before, longer before that, but watercolor, yeah, it's been, again, six, seven years. That's, it's, it's, it's a significant time frame, but not that significant, you know, even if you're, much much older that gives you a long time to improve and i will say one more thing you know i was drawing a lot before but i had no understanding of values colors shadows none of that before when i was drawing it's things i acquired slowly when i became more serious about it and with painting so it's not like I had experience in composition or understanding scenes and focal points, nothing. I learned it from scratch while painting. So it's not like I brought any foreign, you know, abilities. And this is really interesting because I'm going to do, you'll see it, you'll see a digital painting video soon. So something very interesting that I'm doing. Um, and in it, I am bringing existing skills from watercolor into a digital medium. But when I started with watercolor, I had none of that. And you can tell that in the, for example, in this thing, in the meh tier, this thing, you know, no understanding of how to place things, how to you know, organize them in an interesting way. You know, all of these things, they're very important, very hard to do when you're a beginner. You're, you have enough trouble with the technique. So to, to think about organizing things, that's like a, a tier beyond that, you know. So, yeah, just a couple of thoughts about this. Hey, Banani, how are you doing? So happy you're here. Hi from Belgium. Uh, let me know how it goes. Uh, and and it's fun. We're doing tiers. So I'm basically ranking my paintings uh, from the outdid myself tier to the bad tier. Uh, Hank says, hey, Elle, nice session. The mind of an artist is so interesting to look into. So happy that it's interesting. Uh, hello from Prague. Hey, Jackie. Uh, I've been to Prague three times. Did you know that? I don't know if you've heard this. Um, Betty, highly run greetings from Augusta, uh, U.S., uh, what is it, Georgia? Uh, enjoying seeing the progress of your work. Do you ever keep a watercolor journal? I've learned it helps me to keep my work organized. So by journal, do you actually mean some place I write notes and stuff like that? No, I don't. I don't have the equivalent of a sketchbook with watercolor. I mean, I have watercolor sketchbooks, but they're not. There's just a bunch of them and they're all over the place. So it's not really, I would say, a journal. But that's an interesting idea. Maybe I'll do something like that. Uh, Pam says, I'm really enjoying seeing your growth in watercolor, and that gives us hope. Yeah, definitely, because think about it this way. Like, this could be your skill in four, five, six years, whatever, you know. I did really good paintings I'm proud of two and three and four years ago. So you can definitely do it, you know. Um, I'm in my early 30s, but even if you're in your early 60s, 70s, you know, hopefully we all live a long life, but... You can do this. You can learn very fast and make work that you enjoy. It doesn't have to be for anyone else, of course. Um, but yeah, hey, St. Inky, how are you doing? Um, Jackie, awesome. Did you like it uh, in my hometown? Yeah. Yes, I loved it. Loved it. Absolutely. Um, get a book where I paint. That's awesome. That's a, that's a really interesting idea. I'll consider it. Um, so let's do another one. Let's do a few planner. Okay, I have an interesting one for you. So this painting, um, which I would be happy to share with you, like a proper size pick. So just give me, 
give me a second and I'll find it because this is really, I think, really good. Um, it's a painting I did plein air too, which is again, you'll notice a theme when plein air works well for me, it makes me very happy. Um, so let me see if I can figure it out. That that painting was such a milestone for me too. Um, it has those same issues that I talked to you about earlier of um, too strong contrast, too light lights, too dark darks, but it still works. So let me do this, share, screen share, Chrome tab. Sunny, there we go. Okay, so hopefully you can see this. Not the best image quality because I really downsized them, but still it's a thousand on a thousand pixels, I think. So it's it's okay. It's uh, you can see. So the thing I'm proud of most is I don't know. I I really like the way the car in the foreground turned out. This is a painting where I can definitely say at the time I outdid myself. I remember finishing it and I, I was wowed by how I used the color the the paper's texture that was really big for me at the time to actually show all of that you know all of these little uh dots of places where the the rough texture because this was an arch rough if i'm not mistaken <clears throat> so i'm not gonna put this in the outdid but i am gonna put it probably in the in the great or excellent tier um because it it, it deserves it this was a pivotal thing and i remember asking a a, a my friend's father about it because he's paint. He's a painter, too. Because um, I was curious to hear his thoughts on like how do I improve? Because I feel like this was my maximum skill. And he actually advised me that I paint this scene again. Um, I don't remember exactly when it is. Does it mention it here? I don't think so. Doesn't mention when. Um, I don't write enough. Like I have a nose hair that's that's tickling me. I don't write. Sorry, I don't write enough of dates. You know, some of these I was lucky to to have written let's say the dates uh, it's not something i usually remember doing and i always say oh, i'm gonna write it on the other side of the paper or whatever and then i always end up not doing it unfortunately but this one goes straight in the great tier um and i think i'll do i'll do it by order too so i think it go i actually think it it's my favorite among all of these great ones and i think it's from around 2017 so there we go another painting i really really like from freaking five years ago <laughs> um the car marjorie the car uh, in front of the row houses it has dappled light is astounding and yes paint again yes exactly that's those little dots i love that jackie says car cars are my big problem it's to me it's like cars meh it's not a problem uh but yeah thank you so much Dwayne. thank you monica uh, hey, Lynn. Hello from Ohio. I do believe I can get there with your excellent instructions, demonstrations. Yes. And at the end of the day, um, it's your work that's going to, you know, bring you there. Um, my tutorials are for, you know, the way I see it, it's for, of course, the um, uh, the techniques, which is just you need to learn a technique uh, and then to give you the motivation. But then the end of the day, it's really a journey of self-discovery, you know. Um, so you have to put in the work and really be consistent about that desire to to discover you know good new ways of creating basically uh, and jackie thank you so much maybe i'll hopefully in the future you know i never planned on visiting again south america just because it's a very kind of big trip and far away but who knows maybe i'll somehow visit again i'm gonna scratch my nose let's do this i'm gonna switch to a full screen here so you don't see me and i'm gonna blow my nose and scratch it because and because the that's just nose sorry nose hair is tickling me and it's really annoying there we go hopefully it's not gonna happen again it's really annoying <laughs> white dress is your favorite ones are with cars yeah but i do have the geese and i don't paint a lot of animals so you know let's do an interesting one this one has been these two actually have been sitting here staring at us this banana thing in orange and this what is it a uh, honey thing bird i don't know what you'd call that let's start with the banana so funny enough i really like this i actually have a video of this on youtube one thing i like is how some of the shadows are not just tonal so yes this is a light yellow this is a slightly darker same yellow 
But this shadow starts to become more interesting. It's a bit more gray, right? There is a bit of sense of depth and three-dimensionality. And one more thing I would say, look at the bottom of the banana where that yellow kind of combined with the, the wash of the background. I really like that. And I think this was when I showed how to combine that with a pen and ink. So funny enough, it's definitely not bad. It's not meh. I would put it in the decent. Somewhere, I think here, above the castle, probably. And now let's go on to the bird. So this one, if you ever wanted to see a really overworked water by me, there we go. We've seen it now. Really overworked. Um, I do like the colors. I think I did a decent job in kind of letting them mix a bit. Uh, oh, thank you, Barbara. <clears throat> um, but this is just, its it feels a little gimmicky to me in my style. Okay, so like if, if that's someone else's style, that's great. But to me, I felt like I was, I went in a bit, uh, Hummingbird. Yeah, that's right. Thank you so much, Dwayne. Um, I feel like I went on a bit of a side tangent with my art and that wasn't really something that I like as much. Now, I know this is probably going to be really polarizing, but I would go with the meh, uh, top meh, probably here. Um, maybe I'll change my mind later, but for now, it feels a little meh. Again, feel free to disagree with me, of course. Um, uh, Jackie says, it is, but after uh, while well, I practice, I'll just trash my old ones because they are crap, but for the purpose of seeing all... Yeah, I I always keep everything. I recommend everyone keep everything. Uh, White Rose, unrelated question. How long did it take for you to go from starting watercolor seriously to starting to teach it? <clears throat> you know what's so funny? I started teaching it almost together with starting to paint, uh, which is something that a lot of people will disagree with too. Uh, but I just knew that I love teaching so much and drawing, teaching drawing too, and drawing in a more intuitive way of kind of draw it as you see it, that I just rolled it over to watercolor. So if I started painting watercolor around 2015, 2016, 17, I was already starting to share. And, you know, I don't, I didn't even maybe call it teach, but I definitely shared YouTube videos, everything. I started the channel seriously in 2015. And by 2016, 17, I already shared painting processes. So some people may disagree with this and say, oh, you have to have this much experience before you start teaching. I'm not one of these people. I don't mind. You know, it's free videos at the end of the day. I don't mind sharing. And even though there are many people who are better than me, as long as I can help the people who are marginally under me. And that's something I said to a few people I talked to in the past about, you know, people who say, I don't know if I feel comfortable enough to teach. And I'm like, if people ask you questions, there you probably have something to teach. And if people, uh, if you are better than some people, you can be really good at relating to them and you can help them get to your level. That's what I believe. Um, so, yeah, I would say uh, right like a year into it, probably a year and a half, something like that, I think. That's what I remember. Don't hold me to it, but that's what I remember approximately. Um, oh, yeah. So definitely, definitely. Uh, I, I'm not scared of that at all. Um, very, very happy to hear that. Um, so, yeah, I started really fast. Um, so let's do another one. Let's do this one. So this lamp. Um, this was definitely in outdid myself at the time. Because a few things, like the background, <laughs> this is on bad paper. This was on, and I believe it's from 2016 or end of 16, maybe start of 2017, something like that. And that maybe, yeah, something like that, I think. Um, that was a very carefully planned painting. If anything else, and I love it. I think it's, it's, it was a big jump for me in a level. This was very carefully planned. I had a very careful sketch. I went over it in, in, in you know, um, really incremental kind of uh, steps. Let me try. Let me show it to you. Uh, again, full size. Because um, it is an interesting piece of work. Uh, one second. Tab. 
there we go. So it is an interesting painting, um, kind of smoother paper than my usual, and you can tell that, and I've had a lot of trouble with the flow. I believe that's kind of a Cotman paper, but and, and I was at a point where I was really frustrated by messing up a few paintings in terms of flow, and I decided I'm gonna get this one. And I put a lot of effort, and I mixed a lot of paint in advance, and I went for it fast. Now for the palette, I think I actually used the Daniel Smith secondary set. So what you see there is kind of carbazol violet, um, and you see a bit of the undersea green, and you see, and then a bit of thalo blue together with that. And you can see a bit of the crinacridone orange too here in small areas here as well at the top, right? You can see that. Um, so yeah, this was definitely a kind of breakthrough painting for me at the time. Uh, so let me think where I'm going to place it. Um, let's see here. Sorry that I have to kind of restart the sharing every time, but um, I want to rank this one high. It's not a decent. It has to be a great at the very least. I will do. I will go with the great. I think this one's great. And I'm going to put it at the top, top of the great. Um, let's do a few real fast ones, okay, just to get rid of some out of the way. So this one I did plan air. So I'm, I'm always happy and proud with my plan air paintings. But again, that issue with going too dark, um, I didn't have a good plan for the highlights. The, the car highlights are very messy, as you can see. Um, they're just all over the place, around the tail light, around the light, like everywhere. Um, so I'm going to give this one probably a meh. I'm going to place it here <laughs> under the hummingbird, actually. Now, let's do, this one's interesting, because this one, I am proud of its looseness. I painted it plein air. There's a video accompanying it. On the other end, I do have this kind of gimmicky people kind of thing here. They very Alvaro Castaday people. When he does it, it's not a gimmick. When I do it, it is a gimmick. So I have to place this one at a meh, at the bottom of the meh, almost. I wouldn't call it bad. Because there are some aspects of it that I actually enjoy doing. I forgot to bring a pencil that day, and I painted all no pencil. I drew it with the watercolor, which is a good thing. So the next one's going to be interesting and kind of surprising. So this one, this weird boat. Uh, actually, let's expand it for uh, educational purposes. Uh, show us a still life. Yeah, I'll definitely do that next. Um, Let's do, uh, for educational purposes, again, I'm going to expand this one too. I'm not going to expand every single one, but even though it seems like <laughs> I'm doing that. Because um, that's another one of those paintings where I had a good plan. Where is it? I can't find it in my folder. Where are you? Where are you painting? Oops. Um, okay, that's bizarre. I'm going one by one. Okay, yeah, I found it. You know how something is in front of you and you just don't see it? Okay. And I'm going to share. I promise I'll find a more efficient way to do it in the future. But here we go. So this is an example of a painting. I thought I had a good plan, but the execution, really, I dropped the ball. So let's start with what I do like. I like the this area here where the tree meets the land. I know you can't see where I'm pointing, but it doesn't matter. I don't know why it doesn't show it, but whatever. Um, bottom left corner. Um, what do I mean by gimmick people? It means painting people like a, like a, um, what do you call that? Uh, like a cookie cutter kind of thing. That's what it looks like. That's how I'm going to paint it without even looking at the person in the scene and trying to figure out how I would paint them. Not even looking at them. That's what I mean by gimmick. Um, so bottom left corner, I like the colors. I kind of like the wet and wet, but here's the problem. The composition is terrible. Um, this book, this um, book, this uh, tree is way too much to the left, in my opinion. The boat is okay. The reflection works, I think. But the, that castle being above the boat, um, that's just ridiculous. And the reflections of the branches and the reflections of the background, they're on the right side. Uh, whatever that is, I really don't like it. So that's kind of a 
plan and then really bad execution. So yeah, that's why I wanted to show you this one up close because the components work. Like the boat in itself looks okay. The tree looks okay. The castle looks okay. But it's just together such a mess, you know? So I am proud of the things I did get right with this one. But there, the, again, the end result and how it all fits together is a big, big mess. Uh, which is going to put it in... <clears throat> now I can find it here. There we go. In the bed. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to put it in the bed. The mat here is too big now. Let me think if I want to switch something. No, I'm going to put it in the meh. I'm going to put it in the meh. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm happy with it. There's a lot of meh. A lot of meh. So let's do, you said still life. I actually don't have any still life here. It's photos I prepared uh, in advance. Yeah, and this could be a good idea to do a, another version of that uh, boat scene, maybe. The gas cans. Well, yeah, we'll do that. Let's do that now. So the gas cans, you probably all know this. Um, I think one of my best ever. So let's not waste any time. I'm just going to put it in. Outdid myself. Highest tier. <laughs> Now, I do want to show it to you full size, because why not? Um, let's see if I can find the actual original photo, not the one I downsized for this video. Uh, picks, final result. Let's see what I got here. I'll show it to you, the final one. Don't worry. I think that's good. Open with... Chrome. Sure, here. If I could just change, just change the tab I'm sharing, that would have been much easier, but StreamYards doesn't let me do that for some reason. Here we go. Yeah, so definitely one of my best so far. Um, you saw some of the process live. I painted it actually live. And it really goes to show that to paint something like this, it does require a certain price to be paid, which is in terms of effort. Hey, Henny, don't worry. There's there's still quite a lot to go through, and maybe I'll do like a quick summary of what we've done so far. Um, but yeah, this one is definitely one of my best. Um, I feel I feel like your computer skills are equally as advanced as your paintings. Maybe I think my computer skills stayed stuck in my 2018 maybe painting level. I should definitely level them up soon. Um, but yeah, gas cans, fun project, fun uh, fun subject. It, so here's where connection matters, because this is actually the typical gas cans you see here. So I have this more personal connection with this kind of a subject. Um, and then I, I took the pictures myself. I chose the composition. I did it in multiple slow glazes, really building it up, very careful work dedicated quite a few days for this one. Um, and that's how you get a good result, basically. That there's no way around it. it. Just takes effort, you know. What will happen if I close this tab? Will it share another one? No, it's just going to turn it off. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, that's where it's going to be. Of course, it's going to be at the top of the tier. And for Henny and anyone else who joined uh, a little late... I'm ranking my paintings from S tier, which is I outdid myself, all the way down to D, which is bad. Started as trash or crap. Now it's just bad. Meh. Decent. Great. Outdid myself. <clears throat> maybe there should be another tier like bad. Meh. You were correct, maybe. I don't remember who said it in the beginning, but you were correct. Bad. Meh. Decent. Good. Great. S outdid myself. But let's not overcomplicate things. I mean, come on. That's okay. Let's keep it simple. Uh, next up, let's do this terrible portrait. I'm not even going to... I don't have to zoom in on that. I'm, I'm jokingly saying. I'm lovingly calling it terrible. This was from a while back, 2017, I think. Now, a lot of these paintings are actually sold at the art fair. Not not these, but the, from the same time. A lot of them I sold in the art fair. Some ones that I would define as not so good, you know. Yeah. Um Eddie, don't don't put bad. All paintings are lessons, and lessons are all good. 
you know, let me change this one more time. It's funny. Not as good as the rest. <laughs> that's like the the most uh, milk toast. That's how you say it. Milk toast way of defining it, which is funny. Uh, your Mark says your bell curve is sliding down. You need to uh, pump in some top drawer paintings. Yeah, we'll get to that definitely. Uh, pick the best ones, then the good ones, then the rest will fall into its place. Yeah, let's do the best ones. Let's let's do a few good ones. Um, and Linda, so so happy that you got to watch that process. Um, okay, boats. These boats, you've seen them. Posted a video here. Check it out if you haven't. Uh, this definitely goes in my S tier. And probably I would put it... I'll put it under the gas cans, even though if you ask me, honestly, I like them better than the gas cans, just visually and result. But I did put a lot more effort and thought into the gas cans, which is why I'm going to put it above that. Um, this portrait that I was starting to do, I'm going to put it in the not as good as the rest. Because it's such a simple subject, and I could have just gotten this wash much, much better. Let's do Santa, Santa Claus. <laughs> so you've probably seen this too, posted it everywhere. Every time I do a Christmas kind of promo for the courses, I do, I show this, this one too. Santa Claus, great plan, great execution. Turned out just the way I wanted. I used a new brush, a relatively soft one, and worked out great. I'm going to put it in the great tier. Um, let's do an, a few quick ones. So this one, this is interesting. This is based on an aerial photo right here uh, of Jerusalem. And this is a point where I think I kind of outdid myself because here is another one of those examples. You notice a theme where I'm able to detach from what I think is there and actually paint it as I see it. This is the perfect example of that. I'm not going to put it in the outdid but I am going to put it in the great tier. Now, where do I place it in the great tier? I would say top of the great tier, funny enough. Uh, let's do this one here. That's a fun one. This one, I can just, I know where I'm going to place. I'm going to place it in great. And I'm going to probably put it somewhere around here. Uh, because this one, it was very creative of me. I, I really wanted to... This is a painting where I decided to split all the colors almost. So instead of mixing, I decided to use them purely in different areas. So like this car is going to be peach, and this car is going to be pink, and this car is going to be blue, this one's going to be yellow, and then the shadow is going to be a bunch of different colors, which I really, really like. Um, so definitely going to place it there. Let's do a couple of the old ones. This one, I think I kind of, again, not followed the tutorial, but I just went with whatever. Um, I didn't have a good plan. I didn't really know what I was doing. I'm probably, I'm going to have to put it in the not as good as the rest. But this one, which is rather old too, and it ha actually has a date, I think. Let me check if I can find a date on this one. Um yeah, so it's a bit hard to see in the photo, but this is November of 2016. So November 2016. This one I actually like. This was when I tried scratching out the tree branches and stuff like that. I don't even know if that's sky or sea and you're looking from above. But I would put this in the decent. I'm going to put this in the decent. Probably here. Let's do another fun one. This weird thing. For the purpose of what I try doing, I definitely did it the way I wanted. I basically wanted something to jumpstart my Instagram, which is funny. Um, oh, wait. So I showed you the gas cans. Ursula, <laughs> I just showed them to you. But in any case, I hope you... Uh, for the new. Oh, sorry. For uh, Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're waiting with Ursula is waiting with the like uh but yeah. Uh Mark, you've done a few aerial view paintings that are unusual. I think that could be your specialty. Yeah, you know it's funny. It's something I really enjoy doing and I just remember every couple of years and I do another one. So I I'll probably do another one. Um soon hopefully. But yeah, so this is funny. It's, 
I really like the sky, but of course it's gimmicky. I just looked for something to jumpstart my Instagram and, and post, essentially. So this is from 2015. Um, I'm going to put it in the decent. Let's say bottom of decent. Now the tiers are starting to even out. Um, let's do one from New York that I really, really like. So this one, you may remember it. I'm going to show it. Should I show it to you full screen? You can see it on the gallery. If you want to see this one full screen, go to Leron Gallery. Go to the Cityscape category. You will see it there. Um, a really, really interesting one. Not accurate, but beautiful. That's the thing. Like the, the colors are very inaccurate. I exaggerated a lot of the oranges. I did so many weird things here. And it ended up working really well. So I am going to put this one in the great tier. Probably over here. Now we're starting to fill this up. Let's do this one. I did this one plein air. Um, I actually really like it. I feel like for the point in time where I was, and this is from, I think, 2017. I'm not sure. It's a bit hard to see the date on this one, too. Um, you know, if there is a date, it's hard to read. Um, but, yeah, I don't have a date on this one. I think it was 2016, though. Um, I'll put it in the decent, probably. I'm not sure if it's a meh or a decent, honestly. Let's put it in the meh for a second. Yeah, it's a decent. It's a decent one. Okay, this night scene. I don't do many night scenes. This one I had a... Uh, I was pretty lucky with this one, let's say. Uh, so this is definitely going on to my uh, great. It's not a decent, it's a great one. I'm going to put it here. Okay, let's do one that's obvious. This thing... Probably not a lot of people will, or some people won't agree with me. That's a water puddle reflecting our streets and buildings and stuff. To me, I'm sorry, that's an outdid. That's an outdid for me. I know not a lot of people have connected with this, um, but that's an that's a. That, did you see this one? I don't know. I want to show it to you, big. I want to show you the the big version of this one because it's. It's just such a good painting, in my opinion. I worked really hard on it. Um, so that definitely goes there. Stop, share, share screen, Chrome tab, bam. You can see it on Instagram, too. It's not that old. This, uh, I just love it. I, I just love this one. Nothing <laughs> anyone can say will change my mind. All of these small highlights, like... The area at the bottom is so interesting to me. I don't know why. Um, I really like that. Oh, thank you, Banani. I really like the water puddle. Patricia, terrible, but someone loved them enough to buy them and hang them in their homes. So, yeah, honestly, I don't think any of the paintings I sold were terrible because I just didn't put the terrible ones for sale. But I did sell the not as good or the meh. The man, probably a few of them sold. And it also shows you that taste is such a personal thing, you know? Because a lot of people really like paintings that I don't as much. So, yeah. Patricia, I love your guest can's painting. I just finished a painting of two rusty beekeeper smudge pots. One of my favorites. Oh, that's cool. That's really, really cool. Send it to me. Um, Rattlesnake. If you love it, that's it. That's true. Mark. No, I know what it is. I could never figure it out. Oh, okay, yeah. If you actually zoom out a bit, it will make sense. Let me try. It's just a water puddle on the ground. Uh, but it's it's really taken out of context. That's true. Uh, what was the reference? I can actually show you the reference if you want to see it. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, one second, because it is interesting. I didn't show much of it. Uh, puddle. I'm going to search puddle and I think should find a reference. Yeah, okay. I got it. One second. I'll show you. I don't know if I can show them together. I don't have anything side by side, so you'll have to settle for just seeing the reference. Uh, but hopefully it will still make it clearer. Um, so let's see here. I'll show you. Give me one second. It's opened already. This is the reference. And hopefully now it makes a little more sense, right? Um, 
And you know what, uh, Rattlesnake, I love these types of paintings that seem abstract, but they aren't. That's actually something I really enjoy painting. And, and it's, a, it's a good catch on your side because, yeah, it's just more fun for me. It means that I connected with how I saw it and not necessarily tried to stick to the details too vehemently, you know? Um, I want to try to, yeah. Feel free to. Um, do you sell your paintings framed or unframed? I sell them unframed. Uh, it's cheaper to cheap them that way. It's less likely to break. Significantly cheaper, by the way. Uh, less likely to break. And I find that people like to choose their own frames. Uh, so sometimes people just... You know, when I sold it, the art fair, I used to try and sell with a frame. And people just said, I don't want the frame. <clears throat> and someone bought it and said, I'll take it out of the frame. But I don't want to bother you to do it now. So that was what I learned from experience. Now, if you're selling, you could decide to sell the painting as a full piece together with the frame. If you match the perfect frame to it, that's a choice you can make. <clears throat> and um, and that's okay. And then it has this even museum vibe where it, it's, it comes ready made. Okay. I think if you sell locally, that could be a good idea. Because it's really hard to, ch to ship like that. Marjorie, there are so many things you do well, but the hummingbird, no cards don't need praxis for birds. Yep, yep, yes, definitely. Um, let's see. Jackie says, yeah, I like that one, like alien construction, a oh, different planet, funny. Uh, picture from Mars. The painting is much more interesting. Because I'll tell you what, because the painting is a painting, you know, this is a photo of a puddle. Um uh, Rattlesnake, by the way, I learned a lot with you, both free lessons and paid courses. Thank you so much for getting the paid courses. I really appreciate it. Uh, hey, uh, I, Pablo, how are you doing? Uh, Vanani, no, no frame. Yep, yep, I agree. And by the way, um, people choose the frame to match the furniture. Yep, yeah, that's really a big thing. People have this vision of where they're going to put the painting and how it's going to look. So, yep. And I wanted to mention, talking about paid courses, I'm working on something big. This is pretty much the first time I'm, I'm really saying it in a video. Look forward to it. It's going to take about a year to make, but it's going to be a big project. It's not going to be, it's going to be a product. Uh, it's not going to be super expensive necessarily, but it's going to be big. So just know. Um, hello, Truly. How are you doing? Thank you for being here. Truly. Truly sounds like truly with a... I don't know if British or Australian accent. It's funny. Uh, but that's probably me botching the accent. Um, so let's continue back to our tiers. We're going to finish soon. Are you are you uh, ready for us to wrap this tier up? I think it's time. <laughs> so uh, we were talking about the puddle. Let's do this one. So this I painted plein air. Again, with the gimmicky people. I really dislike that one, honestly. Um, I will probably put it in the not as good. It's not even the meh to me because I remember this vividly and I hated everything about it. Um, the colors weren't right. The composition wasn't right. I messed up the details. Not as good as the others. This one of the bridge that I forgot its name. I actually really like this one. This one's for sale in the gallery too. Um, I would put it... Hmm. I'm... Not sure if it's gonna be like a decent or a, I don't think it's great. I think I'm gonna put it somewhere in the top of the decent. The top of decent. That's where I'm gonna put it. Um, then we have this, which I think is a part of a scene from Oxford University. I think. I'm not sure though. Um, where do I feel like putting this one? Hmm. This one has to go to the decent too. Because it is good, it is okay, like the colors are good. It's more than meh. It's more than okay. I really like that. At the time when I painted it, I was blown away by like the light and shadow and how they how I was able to capture them. So yeah, that's that. Here's an interesting one. This motorcycle. I think I sold this one at the art firm. Maybe I still have it. I'm not even sure. I don't remember. The motorcycle one I painted plein air and I just really like that street. It's called, I think it's Geula Street. It leads to the ocean here in Tel Aviv. It's a very nice thing. And here's what I really like about this one. And it may end up getting a really high rank. 
we're talking about this one. The building is not too dark. Those shadows. This is one of the first times that I got some shadows not too dark. And I really made a conscious choice. So I'm going to put this, believe it or not, in the great tier. Probably around here. No, here. No, here. <laughs> it's not the highest great, but it is great. Um, let's see. Let's do the people. I just finished these. Let me actually share with you the final result because I just finished these. Um, I think you're going to like them. And then we'll kind of do the rest. Um, let's see. Where was I? YouTube channel vids. Because I put it in the vids, scans, painting, final, finished, final, open with Chrome. Okay, let me show you this one. Let me get rid of the rest of the tabs here. This is a good quality picture too. Oh. Um, one second. There we go. Uh, so hopefully you can see it well. This one is really high quality, so I can zoom in. Uh, but I just posted it on Instagram in a kind of uh, reel. And yeah, what can I say? I love this one. I love this one. It's more saturated even in real life. I actually have it here. I'll hold it up to the camera. Let's see. There we go. Let me go uh, solo on the view here for one second. I really, really like how this one turned out a lot. Um, it was a fast process relatively. So it makes sense that some of it is loose. But man, I don't know. I love this. I love this one. So obviously the left part I did in the last live stream, I showed you how to paint people in a bit more of a deliberate kind of slow approach. And then for this one, I got tired and I went a little faster. Um, but yeah, this one I like. Glad you fixed the nose on the man on the left. Oh, yeah. Thank you for noticing. I um, Honestly, I don't even remember what the previous version looked like. Let me check for a second before I added the person on the right. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a small fix, but but yeah. Looks a little better now. Um, Marjorie, I think one's paintings just as novel or so much more truthful if it is familiar. The last one is the more pays to find multiple reference photos cityscapes are hard for me. I think one's paintings just as novels are so much more truthful if it is familiar. Interesting. Sometimes I find that it works really to my advantage and sometimes not as much, but I don't know. Definitely sometimes it works. I love the high tinted uh, pants on him. Yep, that's what he's wearing in the photo, so I went with that. Uh, the best one is often the last. Yeah, maybe. But I think this time I didn't save it for less. I wasn't as smart this time. I didn't save it for less. I did another glaze on the hat too, by the way. Here, uh, Yeah, this time I was a little unwise. Uh, but let's see. Maybe we can save a good one for last eventually. Right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, there we go. So... Well, I don't think this is an outdid, but this is definitely a great. So I'm going to put it in great, and I'm going to put it the second to highest here. Because I feel like this one is special. This work in particular is special. Um, okay. You know, I know which one I'm going to save for last. This one is hung up in our living room for about three years now, I think, at least. Painted, uh, not plein air, but based on a photo I took there. Or maybe it was painted plein air. You know what? I don't even remember. But this one, I really like. So I'm going to put it in the grate here. It is a little messy. Again, that issue with strong contrast. But there is a good sense of light and shadow on the people in the car. Uh, this one is interesting. So this is Allenby Street when it was they are doing some renovations. This is, I believe, from 2017. Um, not later than that, though. And at the time, 
you know what? I love one section of this painting a lot. By the way, notice one more thing. Here, my shading is already, and I'm talking about this one. Sorry, I'm completely obstructing it. Let me open it up full screen. No, let me, let's let not. This one, one thing about it is I, I moved away from shading with the same tone. So you can tell, yes, the shadow of the yellow is a bit orange, but it's a different color. It's not just a darker version of the same color. Same goes for the roof here. Same goes for the walls. There is some nuance to it. Some more, uh, I think some more cool colors added mainly. So I'm going to do that thing where I scratch. I have to fix my own nose. Um, but yeah, there was some um, growth there when it comes to how I use colors. Um, this is a part that's no longer no longer exists. They ruined this part of the street, so it's kind of historical. I'm probably going to put it in the decent. It's not a great work. This one, <laughs> I don't know where to put it. I think it's going to be not as good. Because the, the idea I had initially, I was sure I had a good idea. But then I winged it, and I didn't go with my original plan. And the result is really not what I imagined. This was a bit of a letdown to me personally. You may disagree. You may think, for example, that this one should be here and vice versa. This one should be up here. But a lot of it is my personal bias, of course. This one. I love it. So I was walking around the city and I found this spot, like a parking space, that looks like kind of Italy in Tel Aviv. So I took a picture and I had a lot of fun painting this one. And I'm probably going to put it in the great tier. And lastly, this one. Now, because it's last, let me open it up in a uh, separate tab. Let's look at it a bit more in detail. There's one thing about this painting that I really appreciate and that I think is important to share. So I'm going to open it up and I'll show you exactly what I mean. One thing about it, I think I did an outstanding job. It's not going to be outdid myself, but it is going to be up there. So look at the car bottom right. <clears throat> One thing that people struggle with is composition of the overall painting. And sometimes the scene requires you to change things in order to make the composition work. So for example, if you have this kind of a car in the foreground, sometimes the scene will dictate like, dude, you have to remove it. But sometimes you can get away with not removing elements, but rather removing focus from them. And look at how I painted this car. It's a little dark, which hints that it's close to us. And it's composed mostly of big shapes with a lot of wet and wet that remove attention from it, almost calling you to look inside into this taxi and this uh, red building. So, and look at this building that didn't materialize, by the way, that's funny. <laughs> I don't mind at all if I sketch something and don't paint it. So you have a lot of leeway in how you play around with the composition, not just by the elements you put and how you draw them, but also the edges and the values. If you just bring in some water and blend some things, ideally, I would probably blend these details here too. If I would have painted this again, this line, I would have definitely blended. Down here in the corner right, um, this sharp transition where the door handle is which I love, by the way. That door handle is kind of a curveball because everything is blurry and then bam, this kind of a bright detail. So there are a lot of ways of commanding the viewer's attention masterfully. And I think I came across one of them here very naturally. Now, I didn't want the car to feel detached from the ground, so I added a shadow here, even though the shadows don't cast in that direction at all. Not for this car, not for these buildings, not for anything. It's just this foreground car that I put this weird cast shadow to the left. 
weird uneven cast shadow. So my point here is showing you that you have a lot of options in how you play around with the painting. You have a lot of options in you can like the choice of scene doesn't matter as much as what you do with it. That's the thing I want you to take from this because people are often obsessing over what scene should I paint? This subject is not good enough. This doesn't work well enough. This is this, this is that. But what you do with it is much more important than what it is there before you started doing something with it, right? And so after this speech, Hmm. I'm going to place it here. And that completes our tiers. You can see all of my paintings that I chose here. A random selection assortment of about 46, if I'm not mistaken, paintings. And what I think of each and every one of them. Let me check for a second and see how many. Yeah, 46 paintings. These are my thoughts. Again, some may disagree. Right, some are technically better than others, but still the ranking stays the same because I'm biased because I painted them and I know what I hated to paint, what gave me serious struggle and led to zero fruit, and what worked well kind of right out the gate without trying too hard. So let's go over the tiers real fast. I really feel like I have outdone myself in these top ones. Definitely satisfying seeing them all together, I have to say. Now, mind you, this painting is from around 2017, maybe even 2016. So, nice. And I have more that I love. I just tried not including a lot that I love so that I have a lot that I don't love too, so that the, the tier is balanced. But, honestly, I have quite a few paintings that could fit in that category. In the great, we have a painting I did of Palafito Houses in Chiloé, from 2016. We have a lot of older paintings here too, and some new ones like this one that I just finished today. And in the decent, we have some paintings that are mostly older, mostly older. And then in the meh tier, we have a relatively new one from 2017, I believe this thing here. And in the not as good as the other, as the rest, also known as bed, also known as trash, we have a painting from 2021, and there's more. This one is from 2020, I believe, or maybe 2019. I'm not sure, but that's my tier list. Do you? Is there anything you wholeheartedly disagree with? Is there something you didn't like? I'm curious to hear. So feel free to let me know now. We have some more time. Um, I have some bit of work. Uh, to get done but not too too much so let me switch over like this there we go see it like that side by side um i don't know i hope i hope you you agree with some maybe maybe you disagree with others that's perfectly fine let me zoom out just a bit there we go and then i'm gonna zoom in manually so let's see your comments uh joey best says Quiet Watcher from Minnesota, but wanted to say thank you. My style is very different from you, which means I've learned a lot from you. So thank you. Awesome. That's amazing to hear. Yep, I wholeheartedly agree with that um, approach and that perspective. Um, my goal here is not to show you how to paint necessarily beyond the, not beyond the very basics, right? Just the very basics. That's technique. But beyond that, all I can do is encourage you to discover your own thing. And everyone's thing is going to be different. And I'm so happy to hear that, Joey. Thank you so much. Uh, Banani says, my favorite is the gas. Yeah, the gas cans. Definitely a top one. Uh, White Rose, a bottom line. When painting, be ready to be disappointed half of the time. Depressed 15% of the time. Be happy 25 and amazed 10% of the time. That's actually not bad as it is. <clears throat> but I will say this, White Reza. <laughs> you know, try. of course, it's in humor. But I try not to depend not to hang my happiness over how good or bad of a job I'm doing. And honestly, I have to ask you, like, when you look at this thing, does it look like the same person painted this? I would say no. If I would see this entire thing, top line, I could think like S tier, maybe, even though the planner one looks a little different. But under that, every other tier 
I would think it's done by different artists. And this is, again, a gap of about six or seven years, something like that. So growth can come pretty fast. And maybe in a year or two or three or ten, we'll do another tier list. And all of the top tier is going to be kind of the decent. Who knows, right? Um, but yeah, this is actually much more interesting to see than I expected. This is really interesting seeing this like that together. All like I'm going to do a print screen. So that looks really cool. I don't know if it did anything. Let me check. Did you print my screen? Bastard. Oh, yeah, you did. So you're good. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I don't know. That's that's awesome. I love that. Um, uh, eight. Zra uh, is the ranking done already. Yep. That's it. 46 paintings. That, look, I have many more, and I honestly thought this would be too much, um, but I did see other tier lists that are long, and I, thought, I said, okay, it's going to be okay. Um, does, it's not necessarily too long of a list, uh, but I have probably this is this is not even a tenth of of the amount of paintings I, I have done over the these six years. <laughs> um, for every one of these here, there's probably... 15 more <laughs> you know and i'm showing you everything i'm showing you I, there is no painting i'm too ashamed of to show you um i don't think my absolute worst is here but that's just worst is here but that's just you know statistically i just chose it random you know what are the odds to find the number one worst painting i've ever done uh but i won't be ashamed to show it probably so yeah <laughs> uh joey yourself shows in all of them in some way, so not the different. Interesting, interesting. Jackie, when I see all the pictures, looks like you prefer some colors which starting to be typically yours. Yeah, that's definitely true. Some colors and some combinations. Yeah. Nancy, your top tier looks comprised of the slower painting processes. Sometimes I think my slower processes results better, but I much prefer painting faster. It's interesting. So yes, that is true to some extent. Um, but let me think about it for a second. I'm going to open up my gallery because it's interesting that it turned out that way, but I don't think it actually reflects reality. So if I look at, I'm just looking on my end, there are quite a few paintings of mine that were fast and not deliberate and I still love. I actually have a really good example for this now. Let me show you an example of a painting. You You are right. There may be some pattern here. Um, but I'll share with you. Here's a good example of a painting I absolutely love and would be top tier, S tier, <laughs> if I would just choose it in the random selection. And this one, you saw it live. It's not as deliberate. It's more flowy and fast. This is definitely a painting that goes to my top tier. Um, so yeah, it will vary, I guess. Uh, but maybe we got a skewed sample here, you know. Um, Patricia, I love how you allow yourself to say you really like certain paintings. We all have the negative voice talking in our ear. Yeah, definitely. And there are some, you know, some paintings I love that people don't like. So it's like, you know, um, yeah, the top line. Yeah. Uh, White Rosa, there's definitely a recurring color harmony scheme apart from some such as the orange castle or yellow. I'm generally a big fan of... You know, I will say a lot of these paintings are different in their color schemes and color selections. Let's, let's actually take a look for a second. Because I feel like, you know, this has, of course, a much more muted... Sometimes my cursor shows, sometimes it doesn't. It's so weird. Let me see if it will show now. Okay. This one has a bit more muted color scheme. This is very phthalo. This is more ultramarine. This is more of a... You know, I think I don't think it's specific colors necessarily, but I do like specific combinations. Um, and I do try to show at least some range of temperature. So you'll always have a play of blues and yellows, but but very muted, right? Because that's how you really let them shine, by using the muted and using the stronger ones strategically. Um, but yeah, yeah, there is some, there is definitely patterns here to be had. Uh, Marjorie, how many of the top tiers were done on vlogs? I don't remember most of them. So 
this was done filmed. This was filmed fully. It's a 40 minute video, something like that. You can check it out. Just search my channel for geese watercolor or goose. I don't remember this. I did plan air by myself. This I did by myself, but I did share on Instagram. This I did as a video and this I did partially as a video. So a lot of these were shared, um, actually. Uh, Olivier, all failed works are all not anticipated, not well prepared. Do or not do, never try. It's interesting. All failed works are all not anticipated or not. You know what's funny? Because not all successful works are deliberate. So the other way around is kind of the opposite of this in the opposite way is true. You see what I mean? It's like a lot of the paintings that did end up working out were spontaneous in a way. You know, so I don't know. I wonder. Uh, Dwayne, watching you learn to be more confident when painting and not afraid to make mistakes. Um, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Really, a lot of the a lot of the reason I was able to paint some of the more successful ones are the uh, just the the courage because the courage enables you to use technique fully in a way. If you're very timid, you can't use technique fully, and that's a problem. Maybe the use of desaturated ochreish in warm white balance. Yeah, I yeah that's true. I tend to go. So generally speaking, my paintings, my favorite paintings, do tend to have a bit of a warm flair to them, except for the boats. Maybe here, I do like warm colors a lot. Um, actually, this should be here. I uh, changed my mind. The boats, on, you know, higher than the gas cans. Uh, John, great job, Liron. Thanks for sharing your work. I would really like to see you repaint some of the bottom row and how you would improve them, including changing the composition. Yeah, that could be very interesting. That's a very interesting idea, specifically for the bottom row. Let me think about it and figure out how I can do that. That's a great idea. It's a really good idea. You know, it's funny. In a way, this one is, there's some interesting things about it that I would consider bringing it up. Oh, sorry, I'm getting tired. I slept like five hours last night. Uh, Dwayne, Haley Run, I entered 10 pieces in an art competition. Eight made it to the second round. Awesome. Awesome work. That's really, really cool. Um, that's amazing. Uh, I'm curious to see. Feel free to send them to me just to see what you did. Um, everyone wants John's idea. Definitely a great idea. Bethany Jackson. Oh, I almost forgot. Will you ever continue in your painting message? Yes, I will. Sorry, I kind of, I, I'm not deliberately doing this. I'm not taking a break from, you know, from series. I just kind of am without it trying. I'm trying to give myself more freedom when it comes to the videos I create and and really try to allow myself to create in a more authentic way from what I feel like and really balancing it out with good quality tutorials. Uh, but I will go back to doing painting masters. Yeah. We can do a live painting masters like we did kind of in the that live stream. Um, so yeah, a lot of people like that series. I have a list of probably a hundred more artists I want to go over. So don't worry, it's definitely gonna continue, just kind of at my own pace. Um, Jackie, my best pick so far was spontaneous. I had just four simple colored pencils from kids in shit paper, but the magic uh, happened somehow, even was raining and was in spot hiding under a bridge. That's funny how that works, right? It's funny. Patricia, courage is a great word. Courage equals confidence. My oil painting instructor always encouraged big, bold brushstrokes. No timid paintings with him either. Yeah, funny. Uh, Marjorie, although I like the colors, the color show or whatever you call it, I've been pleased when you moved away from the whole product review and of vlogging. That's why I suggest uh, every new painter. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I just honestly don't enjoy doing product reviews as much. I enjoy using products. Marjorie, that's actually a good point. I really enjoy using products, which makes my reviews more organic. I'm not the type of person, like Tio is a perfect example of this. He really enjoys exploring the product, doing unboxing very slowly, showing everything, showing the different uses, doing research. I hate that sometimes. I just don't like that. And the paint show was fun at the time. It was fun to have a show. But honestly, at some point, I was too bored. And I didn't want to explore pigments. And and I, I have to stay, you know, 
to create honestly because to me colors are insignificant sometimes you know, they have an effect on the end result of course but it's not important enough for me to devote a full show to at least not full-time show maybe once in a while if i feel like it right like the rosa gallery painting paintings that i've shown that was fun um but i do enjoy using products and funny enough there will be a big product review video soon um, you're going to enjoy it. It may surprise you. Um, it, maybe some of you won't like it, but but I think it's it's a good video. It's going to be really interesting to, to see, and it's a good product. It's something I've been using for about two years now, so you will see. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Everyone, congratulate Dwayne for the amazing job. Uh, really, really awesome. So I think we can wrap it up uh, maybe 10 minutes earlier. If you have any final kind of questions, feel free to ask them, but we will wrap it up soon. Honestly, I'm just experimenting with these live streams. It's fun to have you here and to talk and to communicate and to be able to answer as many questions as I can. And I'm trying to spice it up with some interesting things. I've never seen anyone doing a uh, My Paintings tier video. There are all sorts of tier videos. It's usually more pop culture, you know, and I'm very happy this has been inspiring, Nancy. Um, usually it's more like TV shows and video games and you know stuff like that. <clears throat> Not a lot of these types of videos. And I wanted to do something like that just for fun. Um, and of course, it's all with a good laugh. I don't really hate any of my paintings. They're all a documentation of me at a certain stage in my art journey, right? Which is really important to remember. Um, so yeah, had a, had a good time here. I hope you have two. Uh, Marjorie, product review vlogs is why I have about 30 brides of watercolor sitting in the studio. Yeah, that's the thing. You just don't need so much. Uh, Jackie, will you be taking in other people painting and telling online what? Oh, yeah, like a critiques. Yeah, we can do a, even a live critique video. Um, I'll try doing that. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, it's something I've done a few of and people keep asking. So, yes, I will try and do that. Uh, send it to me. Um, you can find my email, by the way, on the channel. Just go to the YouTube channel about. You'll choose the show email and you'll find it there. Uh, hey, Chris. I'm sorry I missed it. No worries. We'll watch in a few. It's fun. This is the type of video to watch at double speed because there's a lot of talking and I'm just, you know, putting things in the tears. But basically, I ranked my own paintings. It was fun. Uh, but, Annie, in five words, what do you take with you to travel in five words what do you take with you to travel um hopefully may and ruth <laughs> um but uh hmm. happiness maybe may and ruth that's three words happiness is four paint <laughs> <laughs> to paint outside <laughs> so i'm really bad at yeah art supplies okay so let's do um my usual paints like that's one my usual colors that i like in the past i used to do a different palette for outdoors and then i ended up hating it and i'm like i need my own colors so my own supplies paper of course my easel that i really like that no other easel compares to um water paper i don't know if i said and most important thing, bulldog clips. Otherwise, it all flies in the wind. So, yeah. Um, Tambo Artwork, I'm glad you kept the live streams in your schedule. Yes, definitely. Uh, and this week is going to be three videos, like old time, good old times. Uh, we had one on Tuesday. Check it out if you missed it. Um, I think it really shows the growth uh, I've gone through in color matching, which is a funny thing, you know. I've been using a lot of different tools to improve my color matching, and some of them have worked really well, and I'm going to share them soon. Uh, so color matching, that's a good one. Then there's today's live stream. There's going to be a video on Saturday, too, which is, by the way, a holiday here, uh, but I'm scheduling it in advance, hopefully today. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, very happy you're enjoying the live streams, Tambo. Uh, thank you, Jackie. Oh, let's see here. Thank you, Lola. Thank you, Patricia, for being here. Yep, yeah, let's wrap it up. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Hopefully, I'll get to answering some comments soon. I'm doing, you know, like 50 or 60 comments a, a, at a time, and then I take a break and do another batch like a, a few days later. Uh, yeah, that paper, uh, any clip, anything to hold the paper in place is important, I find. Uh, but also... Um, Paper towels, something to wipe the brush on is critical. But in any case, 
Thank you so, so much for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the tier. If you disagree, that's cool. Let me know in a comment down below if you're watching after the fact. I'm curious to see what you disagree with. And I will talk to you again in another vid real, real soon. Until then, take care.